Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Today's video, we're going to be covering the VBTO3 Magus OTT deck. Um, it is a deck about divination and uh, drawing cards and putting cards on top of your deck that are trigger units so that you know that you're going to check a trigger and you smack your opponent with them triggers. But we're going to get right into that. But if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below so that you don't miss any videos going forward. If the video helps you at all or teaches you anything that you like or learn, uh, please consider giving the video a like. It really helps the video grow and helps other people see the content as well. And be sure to comment down below if you have any tips, advice uh, to give to others or give to me or let me know if I did something wrong or anything like that. Your thoughts on the video, comment down below as well. Before we get the video started, check out our sponsor. Um, up their logo will appear up above me or down below in the description uh, dabbers tcg um they are a local card based store or a local card shop based in georgia um they sell all kinds of cards from Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon vanguard they also have japanese sleeves products and merchandise and they offer video game tournaments and card game tournaments so if you're in georgia be sure to swing by there give them a check out and if you're not in georgia or you just want to order from home uh, be sure to check out their link down in my description to buy some cards from them um, and check out their prices. It is dabberspro.tcgplayer.com. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. Uh, we're going to load up our deck, if we can find it. Bing, 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 bing. OTT. Boom. Alright guys, so there's no G-Zone as usual because standard deck. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, the OTT deck, the uh, specifically the deck is transforming into a Mongus build this time around because they are going more towards a archetype, non-archetype. And what I mean by that is ever since Standard, um, Standard has not cr uh, had archetypes anymore really. Uh, however, they have had like mini archetype supports, um, but it's very few cards that will actually have an archetype behind it. So like cards like Rhombus Magus in this deck and Rippus Magus uh, require that you have a Magus Vanguard, but um, very few effects have uh, required that so far. So there hasn't really been archetype. So I'm gonna call it a mini archetype, but we have changed this deck to pretty much a Magus uh, variant to um, affect or to compensate for the fact that those effects need Magus Vanguard. So Imperial Daughter and CEO are gone from this build and uh, we're just using the new stuff, which is the point of this series anyways, to show you guys the new stuff. So getting into the grade threes, we have four of our, um, I guess, ace card that you would call it, uh, Pentagonal Magus. Pen Pentagonal Magus has two abilities. The first one is on, when it's on the Vanguard Circle, uh, trigger effects revealed by your drive check gets plus 5,000 for power increase. So this turns every plus 10k trigger in your deck into a plus 15k trigger when it, uh, when it is checked and you are on Pentagon Omegas. Uh, this is really, really good because this makes uh, every time you would add power, obviously, it's really good because it makes your opponent guard more. Uh, you're going up a stage in guard by like 5k, so... Um, especially when you have cards like Hexagonal Magus and Rectangle Magus on your rear guard because that means when you check a trigger, if you give it to them, then they will get plus 20k, not only because of Pentagonal's first skill, but their second skills as well. They give them 5k when a card is, uh, when a trigger is drove check. So, uh, your columns become really, really big, really, really hard to deal with and really hard to stop, and it gets really hard for your opponent to survive if they don't have three PGs. Um, the secondary ability is when it attacks, you can Soul Blast 1 Grade 3 and discard 5 cards from your hand. This unit gets plus 3 drive until the end of the battle. And discarding cards from your hand for this cost is reduced for each rear guard with Magus and its card name in your front row. So basically, if you have two, um, I wish that it was just Maguses in your front row because then you would only have to discard 2 and check 5. Uh, that would be really, really good, but I guess maybe that would be a little too good, so that's why Bushiro didn't go that route. But they said rear guards instead, so if you have two Magus rear guards in your front row, you discard three to drive check five. Pretty good, um, especially if you're discarding cards that are useless to you, like extra grade threes, or you're trying to like unclunk your hand or whatever. 
really, really good. You get five dry checks. That speaks for itself. So you guys can uh, really sack your opponent or try to go after the win. Um, also synergizes really well with Tetra Magus um, and the other cards in the deck as well. Moving on to our secondary grade three, we have four hexagonal Magus. This is the grade three out of the trial deck. Um, it has it has a very good ability in my opinion. Uh, really helps you get started. This is the grade three that you want to ride first and then pretty much ride pentagonal for the rest of the game. Uh, but the first ability of hexagonal is when it's placed on the vanguard circle, counter bus one and look at the top two cards of your deck. You get to put them back on the top in any order and then you draw a card. So you basically look at top two, add one to your hand and put one back on top of your deck. Um, secondary ability is when it's on the vanguard or rear guard circle and your drag check reveals the trigger unit and this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So this makes it very hard for your opponent to actually um, normal guard without, like if they're normal guarding without a PG, then they have to account for extra guard stages, which means that they're guarding for more out of fear. Um, what I mean by that is if you would normally attack with a 12k vanguard and check a trigger, then you would go up to 22, so your opponent would normally guard for 27 or higher to make for a 2 to pass or a no pass. Um, but with hexagonal, if they guard for 27, then that's a 1 to pass. Technically, um, you can tell them 2 to pass if, you're, if you want to trick them, but technically it's 1 to pass because if you check a trigger, um, hexagonal will gain 5k from her own skill, and then if you add the trigger power to her, she'll get 10k, so all together when you check the trigger, she got plus 15k power, and she bypasses that 27k block. Um, so very uh, be very careful of that, very um, careful of what numbers actually are like 2 to pass, or 1 to pass, or no pass for your opponent, especially when it comes to pentagonal megas and checking those 5 uh, triggers, so be wary of that. Uh, moving into our grade twos, we have four Rhombus Magus. This is a new card from the set. Uh, when it attacks on the rear guard circle, if you have a Vanguard with Mogget's in its name, until the end of the battle, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. And then if your Vanguard is grade three, your opponent cannot intercept. This card is uh, deceivingly good. Um, what I mean by that is usually when you look at a card like this, you think, okay, it's pretty basic, gets 5,000 power, but it doesn't really do that much. But um, it actually, Rhombus Magus actually puts in a lot of work because of the one reason um, of your opponent cannot intercept. So if your opponent is at 5 damage, or even if they're at 4 damage, if they are playing Excel or Protect, most likely they have grade 2s in the front row that they would normally just intercept with for a 14k attack. But if you attack with Rhombus Magus into their Vanguard, um, it's 14k, and then not only that, but your opponent cannot just get off with an easy intercept. So that means they have to commit a card from their hand to the guard or take the attack. So it's very important pressure to have, um, especially when it can attack force by itself without a booster. Um, moving on, uh, we have four Rectangle Magus, uh, our next grade two. It came out of the trial deck. Um, it has two rear guard abilities. The first one is when placed, counter boss one and soul boss one. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Put them back on the top in any order and draw a card. So same as hexagonal Magus' skill, except it just happens on the rear guard circle. So you want to counter boss one, soul boss one, look at the top two, add one to your hand, put one back on top. Um, and you want to stack your triggers that way. And then the secondary effect that we talked about as well is when your dry check reveals a trigger unit, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So again, uh, just like hexagonal Magus. So rectangle Magus is basically a rear guard grade two version of hexagonal Magus. Moving on uh, to Stellar Magus, we have three. This came out of the new set. It has two rear guard abilities. The first one is during the battle that is boosted, this unit gets plus 2,000 power. So it becomes 11K when it's boosted, which is really, really good because boosted by these 8Ks um, that we have as our grade ones, then it becomes 19K. And then uh, with Rippus Magus, it becomes 24. So it uh, makes really good columns when you're attacking with Stellar. Um, and then with the rear, when the rear guard attack hits a vanguard, you can put a card from your hand on the top of your deck. So you can use this to actually stack triggers, um, putting triggers on top of your deck, uh, or if you're at five damage and this is the last the card attacking, you can actually hit with it and put a heal trigger on top of your deck um, and preparing yourself to take a damage from your opponent next turn and six damage heal, give yourself power to vanguard instead of keeping a heal in your hand a block. Um, so that's obviously a lot better against like Excel decks and stuff like that because Excel decks don't really care about that one heal trigger that you have in your hand to guard, but they do care a lot 
about you putting a heal trigger on top of your deck and then you six damage healing so you ate one of their attacks and then on top of that a lot of their attacks can't hit anymore or they're a lot easier to guard than they were before so um definitely a good card uh but not as good as the other two in my opinion moving on uh to our grade ones we have four circle megas uh, this is not a new card at all. This card came out in the Q4 booster, so you guys should be very familiar with this card by now. Um, Circle Megas, we basically just run it because it has a greater consistency to help your deck than most other cards in the grade 1 slot. So uh, we do want to run this card for consistency's sake. And uh, Circle Megas' skills, it has two. Uh, the first one is Vanguard Rearguard Circle. When your draw check reveals a grade 2 or greater card, you can put that card on the bottom of your deck. If you do, you can draw a card. So this really helps you filter out your deck, get the grades that you need, so that you're not like getting grade locked and stuff like that. Um, usually, I look for, I use the skill of Circle Megas when I A, don't have a grade three in my hand, or in the early game when I don't have a two or a three in my hand. Um, so this card can also help you when it's on Vanguard Circle as well, so do be aware of that. Like if you need a grade three and you attack with this card, you check a grade two, use the skill, put it back to bottom, draw a card, and hopefully that card is a grade three. Or at least it gets you one card deeper into your deck so that maybe you can avoid a G assist by doing that, um, going one card deeper into your deck. Um, the secondary ability is when it is rode upon, you can counterboss one and draw a card. So again, another uh, way to help you go one card deeper in your deck, looking for something that you need. Otherwise, it's just a free uh, free plus. I say free because the counterboss is not really um, a direct you know, cost of any of your advantage, but... Um, it's basically just, you know, a draw one for counter boss one, which is really, really good. Helps you get the pieces that you need to set up your finishing place. Um, moving on to our next grade one, we have four Rippus Magus. Rippus Magus on the rearguard circle when it boosts, if you have a Vanguard with Magus in its name, this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the battle. So it becomes a 13k booster, which is really, really good. Obviously, we mentioned that when uh, we talked about Stellar Magus, but it also works with Rhombus Magus and Rectangle Magus, especially if you check the trigger uh, with Rectangle Magus. So if you check the trigger with Rectangle Magus, and we assume that you did, because, come on, this is OTT. So this card's going to be 14k by itself. Plus 13k makes 27. Great number to hit, protect, and excel clans. Decent number against force. Um, Stellar Magus uh, will be 24, so that's a good number against all three uh, types of decks. And Rhombus Magus will be 14 plus 13, 27. Same number as uh, Rectangle Magus. Really great number to hit against excel and protect. Decent number to hit against um, uh, force. <laughs> But yeah, moving on uh, to our next grade one, we have four Tetra Magus. This card really came in clutch in the playtesting because there's a lot of times that um, in standard you can't recycle your triggers back to your deck. So this is kind of a way to recycle a trigger back to your deck um, to be able to use it again. So when it's on the rearguard circle, when it's placed, if your vanguard is grade three or greater, you can counterboss one, draw a card, and then reveal up to one critical trigger from your hand and put it on the top of your deck. So a couple um, uses and applications to this card that you guys should be aware of. First of all, when you play it, you can counterboss one and you draw a card, but you reveal up to one critical trigger from your hand and put it on the top of your deck. So since it says up to one, you can actually choose to reveal zero, which means that you can play this card and just counterboss one to draw a card. That definitely helps in the really, really late game when you have like, you know, almost like no cards in hand or you don't have enough cards to activate Pentagonal. Like playing Tetra for a counter boss one, draw one could really help you, especially if you're playing the Tetra Magus to the front row um, so that you can decrease the number of cards you're discarding for Pentagonal while increasing the number of cards in your hand. So really, really good. If you're in an advantageous state, you can definitely feel free to reveal a critical trigger, put it on top of your deck. Especially if you're about to check five with uh, Pentagonal, that definitely affects things and uh, makes the game go a lot faster and also is a lot more dangerous for your opponent to deal with. Then we have our last grade, one of the deck, two Crescent Magus. Crescent Magus' skill is when it's put into your trigger zone, basically when it's checked by your drive check um, or your damage check, I believe. Yeah, because it just says going into the trigger zone. So when you damage or drive check this card, if your Vanguard is grade three or greater, you can Soul Blast one to counter charge one. Um, so very, very useful because this deck eats counter blast like no tomorrow. And it's very good that they gave us a counter charge option, but we don't need that much counter charge. That's why we're only running two. 
Um, moving on to our grade zeros, we have our regular Laws and Magus. This is our draw starter. Right upon it, draw a card as usual. And then our triggers, which are eight crit, four draw triggers, and four heal triggers. So regular, our eight crit, our sentinel trigger, which is uh, weather forecaster dismissed, and our heal trigger, which is spear magus. So moving on to our games, half of our future fight video. Uh, you guys will get to see the divinity of this deck in action and kind of the, the big power that it boasts and brings to the field. So you, you kind of no longer, um, at first when I was running this build uh, or this deck, I was running it with um, the Victorious Deer, but you don't really need to do that anymore because the Magus deck makes big enough columns on its own. So game one we're playing is Narukami. He rides, I ride, I attack him. Uh, no trigger, no trigger. Uh, he rides and attacks me. And then I start calling down a board because even though technically I should respect uh, Narukami's presence uh, with binding my cards. I wanted to go in early uh, because if I go in late, like the later the game goes for me, it's an Excel deck, so the worse I am uh, for it. So I do attack him and rush him, um, and then he actually uh, six damage heals, but I had a crit on my Rectangle Magus, so this just proved to be too big for him to uh, block. I don't know why he didn't PG. Maybe he just didn't think that he could survive the next turn after that. But I attacked him with Rhombus Magus, like I said, very, very good, because normally he would just be able to intercept with his Recklessness Dragon, but he didn't because he had to commit a card from hand because he couldn't intercept. And then um, my Rectangle Magus was attacking for 32. Uh, he could have guarded it now that I see his hand. I thought his hand was like clunky and weird, but this had a crit trigger on it as well. Gained 15k power, so it became 24 plus 8, which is 32. We attacked him, um, he 6 damage shield, and then he uh, took a second damage as well because of the crit. So I'm guessing my opponent just kind of gave up in a way, um, which is obviously, you know, not good at all, but uh, if they feel like they can't win after that, there's some opponents that will no guard um, and not do anything if they feel like with their remaining hand after surviving that they can't do anything in the turn following that. So I guess not a terrible option, but we still want to survive as long as possible in standard if we can. Um, second game we're playing against Murakumo. Our opponent rides, we ride, check a heal trigger, he checks the heal trigger, so we both have a heal trigger wasted. Um, he decides to go in rushing me, so uh, he checks top seven and he doesn't get it. And then uh, we check a crit trigger and he checks a draw, unfortunately, so we do take that second damage. However, this allows us to use both Circle Magus and Rectangle Magus. Uh, so we sack a heal on top of our deck, heal, and uh, we attack for 32 to his Vanguard, he PGs. And then he actually draws grade three, makes us go down by 10k to our front row. We take the first one, we take the Vanguard as well, draw trigger. Uh, we take the next one and we take the last one as well. Um, so then he says that he's attacking our rear guard after I take the damage, blah, blah, blah. So, um, we come to the conclusion that we're just going to move on with the game. So I ride hexagonal Magus, um, and I attack him for 14. He can't intercept, so you guys see that he has three grade twos on the board. So this is very important because this makes him, um, commit from his hand. But we attack his vanguard, um, and then we attack for 17. And then he guards with a grade one. Uh, fortunately for us, he doesn't have access to Zambaku because that would have been pretty bad in this situation. So we did just play it off of the fact that he was using the grade three search a lot and probably didn't have the Zambaku. Um, but we just guard the rest of his attacks. He goes for the grade two um, skill. And he soul charges and then he attacks as well using the skill again, check top seven. Uh, he doesn't get it, so he puts the card back, shuffle, and count, uh, so, like, soul charges, sorry. Um, we ride Pentagonal Magus, and then we attack, discarding four. Um, our opponent PGs, so we put a crit, crit, draw, all to rear guard, and then that attack is attacking for 82 with three criticals, so that is way too much for our opponent to guard. He didn't have a second PG, so... Uh, he just ate all the damage and died. Um, so that's kind of what I'm talking about is with Pentagonal Magus. Like, 
it's almost worth doing its skill at all points in the game just because it makes your rear guard columns and your vanguard columns so high like if your opponent like three to passes you that's like nothing like if they give you like a regular three to pass like you might as well all vanguard because you know or your opponent might as well no guard because most likely you're going to hit it and it's going to be the end of them but uh game three we're playing as deleters we ride circle magus uh, we attack our opponent um attacks us gets a draw trigger again we are able to make use of circle magus we attack uh he hits a draw trigger we attack his rear guard and then we attack his vanguard for two crit he does get lucky again and gets a heal trigger so uh, he is at a lower damage than he should be, but it's okay. We guard his Vanguard for a two to pass, and then we no guard his uh, rear guard attack. So we attack for 14, we attack with Vanguard, we hit a critical, and then we attack for uh, with Rhombus Magus again. Very good, by the way, um, that we have two Rhombus Magus out, because this means that he has to commit at least two cards uh, from his hand to us for our rear guards. We use Pentagonal skill, um, we discard three, and then he PG PG's us. Uh, we actually check five and hit no triggers. So that was very unfortunate for us. But then he uh, rides, deletes us, and then um, we just lose. Because uh, it's funny because his remaining hand, if we would have probably checked any trigger, like even one critical trigger, like that probably would have been the death of him just because of Rhombus Mega skill combined with the plus 15k going up in column he only had a um a grade two a grade two and a grade one i believe so it really would have forced the pressure um to the point where we would have just won the game right there but unfortunately in all of our five drive checks we didn't check a trigger that's vanguard sometimes and we lost the game but we won two out of three so it's okay um, but that has been the future fight video for the OTT Magus deck. Let me know if you enjoyed the video um, with a comment down below and a like. Consider sharing with your friends if you uh, want to teach them about the deck or anything like that. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Subscribe for more and check out Dabbers uh, down below as well. Um, and if you're interested in anime, uh, shameless plug, check out my second YouTube channel, Let's Plays Animes, down in the description below as well. But with that being said, this has been Josh from Cardpad Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.